Hi folks, thanks as always for joining me, for your support, especially those over on Patreon, very much appreciated. Loads of videos on there, you'll see the link in the description if you want to have a look. Um, today I've got a sort of Bob Ross inspired mountain scene, loads of water, reflections and lots of nice bright colours and whatnot. Um, before I show you the colours, let me give you a quick plug of my books. So I've got the three books out so far, I've got Watercolour Painting Made Simple, Volume 1, 2, and so far the latest one is number three. I am working on number four, so hopefully that will be out sometime around Christmas-ish. Um, like the others, this is a lots of step-by-step -step photographs to help you through each painting. There's nine paintings in this one, so that's available on Amazon, like the rest of them. You'll see all the links in the description. The colours we used were Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, Lizard Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. And most of it done with the large on Rancid Ake. And then a couple of little rigger brushes, number three rigger and then a tiny little one there just for all the little details. Let's kick it off with a bit of water just to lubricate the paper and then I'm going to go a bit of Lizarin, a bit of light red as well, a bit of raw sienna. I'm going to start off seemingly haphazard approach, but hopefully it will it will come together as the painting progresses. I'm just looking for some sort of background colours. It's too wet, so I'm just taking the water off on the tea on the tissue. I want to introduce a little bit of blue into the sky over on this side. Bit of a lizarin and Payne's grey. Brush down in there, something like that. Come in. Just brushing that in from the side. Deliberately leaving little light areas. And what I'm going to do is take all those sky colours, this time the mix is going to be much stronger. So it's a much stronger mix and I'm going, I'm going to put some mountains in. Someone up there like that. I'm just going to sort of vary the colours on as I'm working my way along. That's coming down a little bit lower. little clouds which just happen to be where the water's dripping down so sort it's of killed two birds with one stone let's just soak that up at the bottom again got another little mountain there and then while I'm doing this which I just did forget to do I'm just pulling down some sort of reflection should pop those other colours in, but not to worry. Now what I want to do next is I want to have like sort of misty effects at the base of the mountain. So just using a clean damp brush just to take out that paint. Create that sort of misty look. Soak up the water so going along. I'm not worried about the hairs coming off. Right, let's scrape. I'm just going to take a plastic card and I'm just going to sort of scrape just a hint of a mountain there. Little mountain side, another one. It's gone down to there like that. A little bit stronger, and then you've got a little one down there. Right, it's paper stretched a little bit, so I'm just going to pull it flat, get it flat against this diesel. Now, let's take a bit of 
on some trees now. So I'm going to get a bit of lemon and yellow, a bit of Payne's grey, really dark green. And then just good because they'll show up really, really well on there now. So I'm just trying to pull down those reflections as I'm going along. Big ones up there. I'm just sort of flicking up the brush like that. Again. So it's got a really dark, dark mix and you got just pop in the skeleton and then just use the corner of the brush just to bring the trees down to the base. Another one in there, I'm just dabbing in the main trunk and then just using the corner of the brush just to brush them in down there. I'm going to stick a bigger one up there just to fill in that gap. Dark, I caught that one in front of that one. Mm, wondering where the no, I wasn't. I was going to scrape in some rocks, but I've already done some scraping in the main, so I don't want to go too, too barmy. So, this is now raw sienna coming down the side of this. of this hill. Bit of light red there just to inject a little bit of colour back into the green. Determine the edges of these banks. I might put a few stones on the edge of these banks actually. Just constantly varying the colours. I'm coming down. And then at the bottom I'll just do a, give it a quick sweep. Bring that out a little bit more. Just push that over into that bit there. Into that light area. A bit of red. Just inject a bit more colour. Ultramarine, darken it all. So it's back to the plastic card. I don't want to get too, too mad. It's hard to resist. We need a bit of land. So I'm to make sure that's flat first before I do any more. Need a bit of land on the left hand side. For these trees to sit on. So let's clean the brush. Let's get back to a lighter colour. Start off with light and it can always get dark as we go along if I need to. So start off with a bit of lemon yellow. Bit of raw sienna in there as well. Bit of burnt umber. Bit of light red. Bit of ultramarine. I'm trying to get a sort of nice sharp chisel edge. It's quite worn this this hike, so I can't get one that's that's that good. Might be time for a new brush pretty soon, I think. Um, you know the, I think we're going to end up with a sort of, yeah I was going to leave that open but now I'm going to fill it in now I think. So 
So it's like a little little hidden corner this lake. Just, just, just flick up like that, just to make it look like little reeds and things. I'll just pull down a few little reflections. It's going to be a bit higher. Now what I think I'm going to do, I just want to blend in, blend this water in a little bit better where the water meets the edges. So all I'm doing, I'm just, I want to, I want to clean, damp, hate brush, sharp edge. So I'm just sharpening the edge like that, but it's nice and clean. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sort of try and blend these edges in a little bit better where the water meets the banks just so it's not quite such a hard sharp edge okay, some, some on here as well just take some of this down just pulling some of the colour off these edges and just just dabbing it everywhere it just looks like little reflections and ripples and things right let's give that a quick dry I just want to pop a few shadows in here and there. So I'm just going to make a little, simple little shadow mix. I'm just going to clean the brush. Not too much water on it. And just a bit of brown, bit of red, bit of blue. Mix those all together. Until we got something. Make sure they're well mixed. Something like that. Um, which way are the, sh the shadows coming? So there's some coming straight over there like that. Some out of shots casting shadows on these fields. A few from the trees there. Just darken that a little bit. Give that a quick dry. So what I want now is a focal point, so I'm thinking like a little boat or something up there, like a little yacht. So I'm going to take me, I'd use a little rigger brush but I know it's, oh, let's see how I get on, let's see how I get on. I think it's going to work with this. Um, so I'm going to pick somewhere just off centre I think, just somewhere about there. I didn't want it very, very, very small. Yeah, I think this would be okay with this brush. So I'm just wetting the paints in a triangular shape, the space of the shape of a yacht, uh, a sail, and then removing the paint with the tissue. I just want to make that a little bit more white, so I'm trying to get down to the white of the paper by removing these paints. 
I'm just wetting it a little bit more. I don't want to get too any bigger than this because otherwise I'll lose the scale of the thing. Use a dry bit of tissue. And then just pull in a little reflection. Not too much, just to give the impression that there's something being reflected. That'll do. So there's my little yacht. Um, while I got this brush in my hand, I'm going to do a little one, two, three little birds, and then I'm going to switch to the bigger brush. I'm just going to finish it off by putting me, stick my name in the corner, and it's call this one done, I think. So. Let's put a mount on it and see what it looks like. So there's the finished painting in the mount. So if we go and have a closer look. First thing I did was the sky area up there, a whole mishmash of the, the reds, the lizarine, light red, a bit of raw sienna in there as well. And then sort of brought that all the way down, right down into the foreground area. And then one of the main reasons, you can see, because this water area now sort of automatically reflects in the sky colours. I ain't got to worry about that later on in the painting. It's already done right at the start. So I've used the same colours to do the, the, the mountains and then just used, used the plastic card just to sort of scrape down the one side just to give the mountain that structure. Another, see that little peak there, another little peak there, and then another one just hiding behind these trees over there. And then to put the misty effect at the base of the mountain, just used a clean damp brush there, and then also in the reflection as well. And then twofold advantage to that, nice misty effect, plus it then lets the tree line show up a lot better. You can see there the little yacht I put in, using it, taking the paint off with the clean damp brush and a tissue. And then just reflected, it was just sort of lemon yellow and Payne's grey, put in really dark. Pull down the reflections as I went along, and then just sort of flicked up with the height brush to create these ones that are slightly closer to us. Varied the colour of the foreground, the, the middle ground, sorry, and then couldn't have just put in a few rocks in with the card, a few along the bank's edge. And then also used a clean damp brush just to soften the edges as well. Rocks continue right round into the foreground. Got a few little shadows from trees or whatever, that's that slightly out of shot, casting shadows across there. Big trees they are, just putting very simply using the corner of the height brush. So that's it, that's it for this one. I hope you was painted along with me. Thanks as always for watching for your support, especially over on Patreon. Loads of videos over there on there if you want to see more. Um, there's all the books on Amazon, paintings on eBay. So until next time, keep practicing and happy painting.